So here we are setting up at Rufford Abbey. It was my first time at this event and I have to say I really enjoyed it. Uh, we put on a home guard display. And this video is just to have a bit of a look round the show itself. And there will be several other videos coming out over the course of this week, which I shot over the course of the weekend. So I hope you find those interesting. Is this the, the camouflage face though? Yeah. Here you see Alan, the chap badged up as a sergeant, uh, who you might recognise from the Keith Lee drill hall video that I've previously uploaded. And he's doing some rifle drill, uh, some instruction in rifle drill with another of the groups uh, present who were portraying home guard. David staring into the middle distance. Oh, watching drill. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see much work going on here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Oh, yeah, I'm going to see what's working, yeah, right? Step on for it. Oh, 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 oh. That's it. Thank you. More jeeps. Always lots of jeeps. Impressive building. Yeah. It'll be up there. So there we go, that's the first event I've done at Rufford Abbey. I have to say I really enjoyed it. Um, and as usual, we'll just have a look at the end here, draw a few of the bits I've picked up at the weekend. Um, spotted for me by my friend Alan, who you saw doing the drill with the, uh, the home guard in the video there. It's an original uh, bone handled toothbrush, which is quite a nice item to have. Bring it down out of the sun there, you can see it a little bit better. Uh, low sun this uh, time of year. Uh, autumn is upon us. So that's a rather nice thing to have. And that's a uh, so I've got reproductions that I'll still use for display, but it's nice to have an original. Um, another thing picked up, uh, wartime and, and to do with Home Guard as well, which is rather nice, is something Alan uh, again found at a previous previous event, which is um, a respirator tin. Now this is a tin, you can see it's made in 1940 on the bottom there, stamped. It's designed to take the civilian respirator, uh, but it's a more, you know, it's obviously the metal tin. It's a um more resilient way of carrying the, the in a cardboard box and it was intended for use by uh the home guard uh, and you can see here instructions uh place respirator straps inside face piece and insert container in carrier uh, with container being the filter uh, shake carrier gently and the respirator will slide into the carrier withdraw by gentle pull do not use force when in inserting or withdrawing the respirator. So this originally, you can just see the remnants around the edge here, would have had a cloth lining inside it and the respirator would have been cushioned by that uh, inside the tin. Sadly, that's missing, but nevertheless, it's a nice little bit of uh, bit of kit to have. So there we are. Some post-war items too. I've got a pair of these uh, boots, uh, ankle, ankle height canvas boots, very much like Converse. Um, we know them as barter boots, uh, but they are very similar in construction to the, uh, or in colour and, and, and the construction of the sole and everything, to the uh, British Army issue jungle boot. And they are very, very useful for representing, they're too small for me to wear, but strapped together on the back of the haversack, they're very good at representing the ankle high boots that were carried by men or plimsolls to wear at night while the jungle boots were get, being given some time to sort of not dry out, but uh, become a little bit less damp perhaps uh, in the jungle humidity but uh, these were worn at night and carried on the back of the pack uh, when patrolling um, or very similar to that they're a good representative of it anyway uh, also picked up two pairs of arctic windproof trousers this pair here which are near mint condition very very nice uh, and they are if we can get the label up here there we are uh, they are mid 80s so you can see there from the contract number, the metric sizing there. Uh, a bit long for me in the leg, but um, nevertheless a lovely uh, six pounds uh, per pair for the trousers, so you can't go wrong with that really. And also a somewhat more heavily worn pair, um, quite you know, repairs in various places. But this is a much earlier pair, and these have the pre-metric sizing, and they're quite a large size, as I remember the waist is. They're a size... I don't know if you're going to be able to read this under the light here, if I can get it. That's not too bad there. You can, might be able to just make out the six there. They're size six. So these are pre, pre-metric, so very late 70s, early 80s manufactured. But you can see they've been patched here on the leg and various other places. But nevertheless, still not in, not in awful condition. And again, they were six pounds, so you can't really go wrong for that. And in a large size as well. Too big for me, but nice to have a, a, a pre-metric pair in the collection. So that's pretty much it. Um, as I say, a bit of grass left over there from the uh, from the weekend. I took this with me, so uh, so I took the blanket with me to do a bit of filming on for um, a video on Home Guard Kit, which we'll be uh, looking at. Uh, hopefully I'll have that up later in the week. Uh, and also a comparison of the reproduction and original Home Guard Haversack. So look out for those videos. And until next time, bye for now. You're not filming, are you? I am. Hands on them. Oh no.
Excellent.